Okay, so in this part, we mostly need to take the invaders and uh, make it so that when they get hit, it's not just a knockback, but also a visual indicator, probably making them flash red or something like that, uh, to make the knockback more obvious. But before that, um, there are a couple minor flaws. So for instance, in weapon stats basic, if I was to take the knockback stats and make this none, then there would be no knockback like before, right? So I had the condition to check if uh, the hit had a knockback, which was working before because um, that would mean that it would never do the play hit action tick if there was no knockback, which would mean that it wouldn't stop the character from moving without a knockback. But um, since I switched the condition back, if we hit, you'll see that just for a single frame, it does kind of stop their movement, which is an issue. So uh, what I think... I want to try doing is on play hit action. If there is no knockback, then I don't want to continue on to the tick. I actually want to interrupt um, with the actor and the blackboard. So let's do p actor and p blackboard. We'll create that function and then we'll exit immediately. So function interrupt, which is p actor. Um, which is going to be a node, and then the key blackboard, which is a blackboard, of course. So what we can just do is return success. So if we do interrupt there, we return success, and hopefully it will stop immediately. It does seem to still have like a little bit of a moment there where it's not actually continuing the movement. Um, so if we check wander action, after wander... We set the character velocity to zero. We could remove that. And then now if we shoot, then okay. They're still gonna have the same velocity until they're told otherwise. So maybe what we do is we check if the hit data has a knockback and then we set it to zero here. Yeah, I mean, that will work, I think. So if hit data dot knockback, then we'll set the character velocity to zero. Or if the character's not alive, I guess. So, or, or the character's not alive. Okay, I think that should work okay. So let's hit play. Okay, our hit data, well, of course the hit data also has to be valid. So I guess we can separate these into different conditions. So if the character's not alive, we're going to return false, of course. And then we can check the hit data. So if the hit is valid, and the hit data dot knockback exists, then we'll also set it to zero and return failure. Oh, oh, for we only need to check the hit data knockback if uh, we're setting the velocity to zero. So if the hit is valid, we'll return failure, but if it also has a knockback, we'll set the character velocity to zero. So whenever we create a knockback, we could just set the velocity to zero inside of that script, but I wonder if that would be nested too much to make sense. So like in hit data dot knockback, if we check the knockback script, it could just be like on init, we take the body and we set its velocity to zero if uh, the knockback stats has a duration that's greater than zero. Yeah, maybe that would make sense. Uh, so our play death action should already be setting the velocity to zero. So we should be saying like actor.velocity equals vector two dot zero here. So we don't need to do that on exiting the wander action. So we can kind of just return this to where it was before. So is alive or there is valid hit data and then we'll return failure. Okay, so just like that. And so for the knockback velocity, we'll set the character's movement to zero. You know what? Maybe that makes more sense of doing on the play hit condition. So if there's a knockback, well, the character velocity is getting set to the knockback. And if not, then we don't actually want to change it. So actually, we, maybe we don't need to do that at all. So let's hit play and shoot. Okay, so our shots don't have a knockback right now. So they're working as intended, right? So if we hit play, it looks like they're completely ignoring the shots, which is what we want because the weapon stat basic has no knockback. So if we add in knockback stats now and we hit play, then they're going to set the velocity to the knockback speed. All right, all right. 
Yeah, okay, that's looking more correct now. Okay, so regarding the hit shader, I kind of pre-wrote this um, for the video. We'll like try to cover everything here as I put it back in. But first we have to create a way to actually set the shader onto the sprite when the character gets hit. So I think creating a new action in the hit sequence would make sense for that. We could create a set shader action and we need to target the character sprite 2D. So where you set a shader is gonna be on the material section in here. So we would like have new shader material. So the default material here is just gonna be nothing. So uh, let's create a new action on the hit sequence. I'm gonna add a child node. We're gonna look for a action leaf. I'm gonna move this above play hit action because we want it to play before the play hit action. And I'm gonna call this the set shader action. Let's right click on it. I'll extend the script and we will set this in objects. So objects slash set underscore shader underscore action. We'll create that action leaf script. So the class name set shader action does exactly what you would expect. So we need a reference to the sprite. I'll say at export var sprite, which is going to be a sprite 2D. Um, does that work with animated sprites? Hold on. Assign. Oh, it does not. Okay. Interesting. So we can say animated sprite 2D. Then if we assign that to the character sprite 2D, let's see, animated sprite. So actually, let me see, is there a parent class for this? I think we could just use canvas item, which should have a material. Ah, okay, okay. So let's do canvas item and you know, we'll just call it canvas item. We assign the character sprite 2D. So this should also work with uh, regular sprites now because it's using a parent class. And what we want to do is we want to set a material on, a, on that. So we'll do ex export var. Uh, let's see, what kind of class is this? Is it just material? So it's going to be a pipe. I guess we will try material. And we will see if that is the same thing. Okay, if you click on sh set shader action, we can click here. That doesn't seem quite right. So there should only be a couple here. Let's see what the parent class of shader material is. Shader material is of type material. Okay, so I think we want specifically shader material then. So shader material. Now we can click over here. What do we want to set as the shader material? We want a new shader material. Uh, we open this up and we need to create a shader for it. So you do do new shader on this menu. So let's say uh, hit shader. I guess just hit.gd shader works. Um, and we'll put that in objects. I'll create a shader folder. Actually, let's create it in the root of the project. Uh, I think this maybe deserves its own category. So I'll create a shaders folder. And we have the hit shader. So we're going to open and save that. All right. Now we can click here and we get the editor window for shader. Okay. So I'm going to start by copy and pasting all of this in. Then we'll kind of talk about it for a little bit. We can see the shader going over there on the right. So just flashing between the base color and the red color. Uh, we can talk a bit about it. I'm going to hide that for right now because that is a little annoying. So I do want to caveat this section by saying I'm really new to shaders as well. So I'm just kind of experimenting probably almost as much as you guys are. But let's try to go through what I have for the setups. If you want to create a variable that you can set in the inspector for a shader, then you call it a uniform and then the type. So here it's a float. I have two time scale. So how fast to animate the blinking, defaulting this to 20. Um, and then uniform float GB ceiling. So in terms of the green and blue color, how much do we want that to be able to reach? So when it's completely red, I believe, uh, how much green and blue do we want inside of that from the base color when we're multiplying that for each individual pixel on the shader? Okay, so uh, the void vertex, called for every vertex the material is on, not using that. Instead, we are uh, calling the shader functions on fragment, which adjusts for every pixel on the 2D image, basically. So in order to basically loop through the animation, in a sense, I'm calling a sine wave function on the time times the time scale. So the more the time scale goes up, the faster this is going to animate, I believe. 
And then I get reference to the current color of the pixel in question, and I'm changing the color of the pixel in question. So this takes a vector four, which is RGB alpha, so red, green, blue, and alpha. So uh, the red value is always being set to 1.0. And then the green and blue value is going to be based on the original green and blue value of the image. And then we're multiplying that by where it's at in the time cycle. So remember, this is a wave, so it's going to fluctuate like up and down, up and down, up and down, which means we're going to have the green and blue showing, and then it's not going to show. And when it's not showing, then we get all red. And uh, this is being multiplied by the uh, ceiling value to basically limit how high it can go. We keep the original alpha of each pixel. So that's basically it. And what we get as a result if I open up the shader material, it looks kind of like this. I think though, maybe rather than having a 100% red color, I might actually want it to be the original red color. So I could do text color dot R, pull the original red value in, that'll always be there. So then it goes basically between red and kind of a uh, pinkish red whenever it cycles. So. Uh, basically, uh, what we're going to do for the set shader action is when the shader enters, we're going to set the shader on the canvas item. So if we do function before, uh, what's it called? Let's look up action leaf and then leaf and behave node. It's before run. So we can copy this into the set shader action like that. And all we need to do is say, Canvas item dot material is equal to material. And when I exit the play hit action to finish the hit sequence, I actually want to also set the shader action. So I'm going to copy and paste that down below. Oh, I could say set shader action remove or remove set shader action. And now if we uh, click on this remove, we can just remove the shader material here. So it's going to set the canvas item material to null. And that should just remove the shader. Um, so if this is working correctly, then we should see the shader while the play hit action is going. And that is basically the gist there. So let's shoot. And as you can see, we get the hit shader to actually play on our enemies. And it's very obvious when they get hit now. Um, I might want to control the knockback a little bit more. Maybe it needs to be kind of a progressive buildup to the speed. So maybe it should be more like an acceleration. So if I hit play now and we shoot our enemies, we can see that uh, they are going to flash that red when they get hit. So it's very obvious when they get hit now. So to test a little bit easier, we can set the damage to one. So all of the characters will survive more than one hit. Uh, we hit play and uh, let's shoot our enemies a bit, kind of bully them over towards the edge of the screen. Um, as soon as we let off with the projectiles, they'll, you know, resume their wander state. That's kind of what we expect. And if we keep shooting, we can kind of bully them into a corner. So if we wanted to, we could herd this guy over here. Okay. Yep. And mostly seems to be working. The knockback doesn't always actually go the right direction. So that's a bit of an issue. I wonder if that's just because of the position of the hurt box and the physics body. So for the hurt box shape, we can give it maybe another uh capsule shape and i'll try making this just like a pixel bigger so let's hit play and uh maybe this will help with the hurt box issues a little bit so uh when the character knocks back to the opposite direction we would expect i think the code is uh executing as written but basically the spawn position of this projectile is going to determine the knockback direction so if i go right on top of them then that might mean like right here that the projectile goes over here, but the character's over here, so it knocks it back to the left. That may or may not be intended behavior. So if if, if that's something that bothers you, you can just change your knockback uh, direction formula, and that should clear that up. Or if you like it this way, you can leave it alone. But it's not really problematic, it's just kind of how it's coded. So uh, anyway, the hit shader seems to be working. And we could actually extend the knockback vector a little bit. So let's take the duration and make it one second and hit play. And we'll see if uh, this actually gives it time to loop through. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, we can see the flashing definitely is happening there. It might not be obvious enough, so you could change the parameters of the, um, of the shader. 
So if we go to shader, shader material, shader parameters are down here. So maybe we make the GB ceiling like 0 0.25, or then depending on how that's set up, that's going to make it more or less obvious. Yeah. But anyway, the flashing is definitely there. So that's pretty much in a nutshell about all there is to do about doing basic knockback on a character body. So anyway, uh, the main component of this video, getting the shader to do its flashing red hit indicator, uh, definitely working there. Knockback could definitely use some tweaking a little bit, uh, but I think that we are in a good state for the end of this video.